Hello there, my name is Will Patillo. This is the second in a four-part series on moving, scaling, and rotating the camera rig in virtual reality. This is set up for the Vive, but I imagine it could uh, work in other consoles such as Oculus without too much adaptation. Uh, last week, we uh, just focused on getting input from the con left and right controllers, uh, telling them when the grip buttons on either hand is pressed, and then using that, uh, passing that to the camera rig itself and calling the appropriate functions. So scale, rotate, and move. Right now we just have some test code on the debug log lines. Uh, by the way, in case you missed it before, this uh, rig control is on the camera rig itself and the controller inputs on left and right controller. Uh, so anyway, today is going to be focused on the moving the camera rig. This is very useful if your application involves climbing in any way, and it's also a nice uh, locomotion mechanic. Uh, I'm using it in, in, in an RTS I'm working on right now for whenever the player wants to move a short distances and, and gives them a lot of control. It's also has ver not very prone to motion sickness, which is a big plus. Uh, so the way that this is going to work is when the player holds, presses and holds the grip button with either the left or right hand, but not both at the same time, and they pull, then the camera rig is going to move in the opposite direction that uh, they're moving their hand. So it kind of simulates pulling themselves along through the space. Okay. So let's get started. I'll get rid of this debug log line and start with the central logic that this function is going to use. I'll add to it shortly. So start with move delta equals move previous minus move current. So what's happening here is we look at how much the hand has moved since the last frame. And we determine that by um, just comparing what it was last frame with this frame. Uh, I'll make more sense as we go. Next, one dot position plus equals, uh, gotta spell it right, plus equals move delta. So this line will actually move the camera rig. Okay. Okay, get some comments in there so you know what's going on. Okay, next, if left gripped, then move cur equals left hand lock dot position, and else if right gripped. Move cur equals right and lock dot position. Okay. Uh, actually, and also before any of this, because we got a lot of red text here, we're going to have to define some of these variables. So let's see. Create. These can be private, so I'll just have a vector three. Move cur. Move previous and move delta. Uh, also, I'm going to need to get the locations of the left and right hand. So uh, actually, I think I'll use serialize field. Left hand lock and right hand lock. OK, and I'm using serialize field here again because I need to, I want to be able to assign these transforms in the inspector, oh, which reminds me, they are transforms. Lastly, move previous equals move current. So how the way this should work is you look at how much you've moved last frame, uh, move that distance, find where the player's hand is this frame. Depending on which hand is uh, pressing the grip button. 
Okay. And saves and position for use. Next frame. What if this is the first frame? There's nothing going to be a saved in move previous. So this could cause unexpected behavior or maybe even throw an error. So I'm going to add a condition right here. Uh, let's see. Um, if move prev equals vector 3.0, because all vector 3 variables by default will initialize to vector 3.0. I could specifically set it to that in the, the start method, but I don't need to. Um, so anyway, if that is the case, then move prev equals move cur. Okay, so the first frame, move previous and move cur are gonna be exactly the same, and so move delta is gonna be zero, and they're not gonna move at all, but that's okay. The first frame we can just throw away because frames are very short, nobody's gonna notice. And then else, if move previous is anything other than vector 3.0, which meaning that uh, that this happened, last frame, then that's when all of this stuff is going to happen. And next is we need to actually set these left hand and right hand positions. Is right now they're just variables with, with nothing going into them. So if, and remember all that this grip really knows um, so far is that whether left gripped and right gripped are true. So that's what we need to use uh, as a basis for getting our position. So if left gripped, and you can say equals equals true, um, that's just implied when you just say if left, gri left gripped, uh, then move cur equals left hand lock dot position else if right gripped then move cur equals right and lock dot position and also since I'm referring to these I wanna may as well assign these now so it'll also make it a little clearer. Okay. All right, so I got my rig control script here. I need to, looks like we got a console error. What's this? Cannot convert a vector three into a bool on line 33. What's going on? Oh, yeah. Single equals versus double equals. All right. How's that now? Come on. All right. No errors and good. My serialized fields have showed up. So I'll put my this uh, left controller into the left hand lock and the right hand controller into the right hand lock. And because I have them listed as transforms, it will automatically put the transform component of these rather than the whole game object. So that skips over a get component. Let's uh, test this out. Grab my controllers. All right, I got my hands here. And I grip with just the right hand and I move. And yes, I move. Grip with the left hand and I move. Except there's a little bit of a problem. Every time I click a new grip button and I jump back to the starting position. So that's that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, I'm also gonna check what if I grip with both hands, move it, move around, nothing happens. Okay, so it's essential, the, the core of it's working, but we have a little bit of a bug. So let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, all right, so what's going on here? Well, basically the issue is that move 
if I let go of the grip and then grab somewhere else, move previous is still set from the last frame in which I had the grip button pressed. Uh, and so that creates this huge move delta when I grip again uh, somewhere else, which is what causes the, the uh, location to just jump every time I press the grip button uh, after the first time. So that's a little fairly easy fix. Uh, I'll just create a void reset move. New function here, move previous equals vector 3.0, and dist previous equals 0f. Uh, actually, no, no, that's all I need. Just move previous equals vector 3.0. That the other stuff is for later functions. So I'm resetting this move previous. Um, at certain occasions, and, and then the first frame of the next time I, I uh, press the grip button again, it'll be the first frame will just be thrown away as it gets initialized to the move current, and then after that it will work. So now we just need the right occasion to uh, reset this this movement. Uh, so essentially it's going to be whenever the player presses the grip button on either hand, uh, which we actually already dealt with um, back here. If, uh, if I, it's the game object is left controller, get press on the grip, and I'm having a camera rig reset move uh, right there. Now, I'm doing this a little bit, bit of an unusual way. Typically, a better way to, to set up a reset move would be to have another event of device.getPressDown, and then just have reset move there. Uh, the way I'm doing this currently is um, when I press the grip button, I set left grip to tr uh, set left grip to true, and uh, when I release it, it goes back to false. So that way, when I press it the next time, it's it has that false setting uh, that it was before, and so it's basically a way of uh, making this reset move called as a one shot. Um, and I'm doing the same thing when the right controller is pressed. Uh, so this, this was actually uh, covered last video. Um, so anyway, with this little reset in place, that should fix the error we were seeing. So make sure everything's saved. And I'm going to try. Oh, compiler error. Ah. Yes. So I'm calling reset move from a different script, so this needs to be public. Let's see if that fixes it. Rig control reset booth is already defined. Rename this member or use different parameter types. Interesting. What is that about? Where does it say here? It's rig control 49. Okay, public void. Oh, I had set this up last time. Actually, that is a, a good place to put that function. Yeah, I, it's an error of, that's what happens when I post these videos over a week apart. A little artifacts from previous sessions can carry over. All right, that should fix it. All right, now play the scene. 
put on the headset, and let's see what happens. Grabbing with my left hand, pull, let go, and I stop. And I can continue pulling, move myself around. And I also with the right hand, I can pull, move all over the place. I can also climb upwards and downwards and go underneath. Yep. And if I grab with both, does nothing. Just wave my hands around, not pressing the grips, does nothing. And so, yes, everything is working exactly as it should be. So that will be it for this video. Um, if you are using this in a climbing application, you just need to add a additional condition that um, checks. You would, um, uh, on your left and right controllers, you would place uh, some kind of collider, uh, probably as a trigger. And then you add in a um, add trigger enter um, an on trigger event uh, or, or keep track of to, of when your hand is in a collider and when it isn't and then only be able to call this move rig function when the grip button is pressed and that hand with the the pressed grip is inside of a grabbable collider uh, and if it's not then the grip does nothing and if it is then it works just like this next time is going to be moving on to scaling the camera rig uh, to be able to make yourself bigger or smaller. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video and learned something from it, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Will Patillo signing out.